Innovating Education Learning World in association with WISE, an initiative of Qatar Foundation. Our final exams, the best way of evaluating students' progress and teachers' performance, are they really the only way or could we do without them? And how about dealing with all the stress during exams? We examine the question now on Learning World. Every year, millions of Chinese students sit marathon nine-hour university entrance exams, some of the toughest in the world. In an effort to revise and prepare for the exams, some students will go to any lengths, including private tutors and dietary supplements. We find out what it is like cramming for China's exam machine in this report. More than 9 million Chinese students in their final year of high school face the Gaokao, the dreaded Chinese university entrance exams. It's the primary tool used to sort millions of Chinese students into Chinese institutions of higher learning. But it's also a national obsession and many students cram at private academies. For most Chinese students, the Gaokao is the only path to a better future. But for our country, this test is a way of selecting talents. So if students want a bright future, they must enter higher education. The main problem is that educational resources are scarce and concentrated in a very few cities. Their test preparation courses focus on quality instruction and test-taking techniques. Between school and these academies, students study 14 to 16 hours a day for this college entrance examination. There's no time for anything else. I've been preparing myself for the Gaokao since I was in primary school because this exam is so important and could change my life. During the last whole year, I've completely dedicated my time to this exam. Last year, a set of photographs of students from Hubei collectively receiving intravenous drips to replace energy while studying for the Gaokao attracted attention from all over the world. The nine-hour test is offered just once a year and is the only gateway to virtually all Chinese colleges and universities. Thousands and thousands of parents anxiously await outside the exam halls for their children. For our children, the Gaokao is a very important time in their lives and for parents too. Today, kids arrive at the end of a long, hard road of learning where they become adults able to control their own lives. For the last five years, the number of test takers has fallen from a peak of 10.5 million in 2008 while the number of Chinese students seeking to study abroad has climbed. But despite its many flaws and difficulties, the Gaokao also gives the opportunity to rural teenagers to become engineers or surgeons. No matter if they're rich or poor, if the students pass this exam, they can become what they want. In England, Wales and Northern Ireland, 15 and 16-year-olds take GCSE's general certificates of secondary education in anything up to 10, 11 subjects. Obviously, the more subjects you take, the more you have to work. And it is often said that the stress can be debilitating. Or do some students overstate the case? Let's hear what our interviewees have to say. Um, I'm just packing my bag for my geography exam um, this morning. I'm really nervous. I, yeah, I had worked really hard last night going over things I wasn't so sure about, but I, I think I'm ready. Like Lauren, all 16-year-old students in England, Wales and Northern Ireland go to school to take exams for their General Certificate of Secondary Education, or GCSE. Even if two years later these students will have to take other exams to get to their A-levels, the GCSE results can already affect their future. Most UK universities would, um, would say that GCSEs are the best predictor of outcome of a degree course. If, if you look at... Um, the, the, the standard way to, to go to a UK university is through A-levels, A2s, um, which AS and A2 is a two-year course. Funnily enough, when the universities have conducted their research to look at 
how the final outcome is, is related to um, prior qualifications. The A2s have less um, relevance for the final outcome. It's actually the GCSEs that have the best, out, the best they are the best predictors. Prepared over two years through mock exams, different exercises and guidance from their teachers, Lauren and Beatrice feel better than they had expected. It is quite stressful, but it's not as stressful as people say it's going to be. Yeah, like, definitely. Like, it's, it's not, like, completely life overtaking. Yeah. <laughs> When her exams are finished for the day, Lauren still has to revise for the coming ones. I try using a study guide. My dad helped me make one, but sometimes I don't keep to it. But I mainly just... I prioritise the things I really struggle with because then I can go to my teachers and ask them for help and advice. Then I tend to leave the things I understand well later um, towards the exam. I think just getting to start studying, just starting it is the most difficult thing because just not getting distracted and just sitting down and focusing for a few hours, I find that quite difficult. But Lauren has found the solution to clear her head. Four times a week, she goes with three other girls in year 11 to rowing practice. For one hour, they put their work aside and switch everything off. Ready or not, Stressed or not, final exams remain a fact of life. But are disappointing results really the death knell to career success? And are exams the best way of testing achievement anyway? Couldn't we just abolish them and relax? We talked to OECD education analyst Eric Charbonnier. At the Parisian offices of the OECD, the PISA, or Programme for International Student Assessment Report for 2012, is about to be completed by Eric Charbonnier and his colleagues. He says it's obvious that many countries copied the French baccalaureate model, created by Napoleon in 1808, by introducing final exams at the end of the secondary cycle. Nevertheless, the symbolic value of the baccalaureate in France is all important. France and Ireland are the only countries where the baccalaureate has to be done in one single exam. It means you don't take continuous assessment into account, and the exam is very stressful for the students, but there is also great satisfaction when you pass. In many countries, it's a kind of mix, especially in Europe, between continuous assessment and the finals, like in Germany, Austria, Switzerland, or Italy, where at the end, the final exam has less importance than in France in the final mark. Then there are countries where the final exam doesn't count at all. In Greece or Sweden, you get a certificate at the end of the year, and the real selection starts at university. With so many different systems, Systems, is it still relevant to keep the baccalaureate as an international reference? The OECD experts think so. It's a key indicator for us at the OECD. We look at the number of people who have reached the baccalaureate level to get an idea of the educational system and to see if countries have bridged the education gap because there are some countries, like South Korea, which now have about 100% of young people with the baccalaureate level, whereas 40 years ago there were only 60%. So we can see the large investment made allows young people to get the diploma and that's why it's a reference to us. De référence. The 150,000 young French people who leave school without a diploma are three times more likely to be left behind in the marketplace. In China, for instance, only 6% of young people get a university diploma, so it's easy to realize how valuable and rare the baccalaureate is in that country. And at the end, getting the baccalaureate is like getting a free card for employment. Nowadays, in OECD countries, one out of five young people leaves school without having the necessary skills and knowledge to compete on the job market. And what about you or your children? How did final exams go? Did you panic or was it a walk in the park? For me, I confess it was a horrifying experience. Join us on our social media pages to find out how the rest of the Learning World team felt about their final exams. 
And don't forget our Twitter hashtag is LearnWorld. Goodbye for now. Learning World in association with WISE, an initiative of Qatar Foundation.